Tim Holtz, chapter two. So it's a new chapter, same old Pete, oh, new shirt, apart from that. But we're gonna look at them individually and this is my take on these wonderful dyes. Now, if you want to know more about them, then why not go to the Wellspring, to the source, to the man himself, Tim Holtz, he's put up a wonderful overview and there will be a lot of different projects on there different ways of approaching these things, different types of makes. So please do go to Tim's website or to our website and check that out. It is fantastic. So where to start? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I will start with an old favorite. Now, this is Brush Stroke Flowers number three. And when I say old favorite, this is obviously the third in the series. One of the things about Tim, when he finds a style, he likes to add to that. So that gives you added value. That means that these will work with one and two. You can mix and match. And I'm sure there will be others coming out in the future. So it's about the entire story. So that you can see, you can see the size of these dies. Again, you get those lovely crease lines. So it makes it easy to place all the individual elements where you want them. Now you can put them in you can leave them out. As always, it's entirely up to you. Now, let me bring in, first and foremost, one of the makes that we've done. And because it's brushstroke, because these were inspired by watercolor brushstroke florals, as you can imagine from the name, you'll see that I've used Distress inks quite expressively. So I've had a lot of fun here. I like the balance of colors and I love the way that they pop out against the black. Now next up, slightly reining that in somewhat, we've got just a note. Now this obviously a blue and green color palette. I think that when you limit the color palette, it can sometimes give it greater impact. Then after that, we've gone again with a single simple unifying color palette, pinks and that yellow to give it some contrast put the blue in the background as well. And this says, Diochenvaur, and those amongst you who speak Welsh will know exactly what I'm talking about. For the rest of you, it means thank you very much. Now, obviously that's all about our distress inks. How about just using plain, beautiful cardstock? When I say plain, it's actually textured. This is a Sizzix cardstock. Uh, there are 20 sheets in the pack. Please do go and check that out. It's a wonderful set, perfect for your florals or indeed, any of your die cut makes. Now we'll take the flowers out, but we'll stay with the flower field. Uh, flower theme, not, this is actually called flower field, uh, hence my mistake. So what we get here, we get this wonderful silhouette. And again, it's part of Tim's ongoing story and his love of these love, beautiful wildflowers. There are sets of wildflowers previously, uh, three of the large ones, a couple of the smaller ones, and this will work with them as a background. Now, a few ways of using them. How about that one? Now, this one, uh, I think if you go on, there will be a vlog done where I will be showing you the techniques to create this very card. So uh, go on the website and check that out. Um, next up, again, a similar sort of thing, using our distress inks to pick up the different colors. Um, really nice, really simple. But when we talk about simple, how about a plain black silhouette with the background elements obviously created using the distress inks. But sometimes that plain black silhouette has more impact than all of the color put together. And finally, one more, this one, I've cut it up and I've overlaid them. And then what I've done is I've used my luster wax just to pick out the detail, just to get that kind of metallic sheen going on there. And I can see Josh moving the camera, so I'll actually do the moving for him so we can see the light picking up on there. Thank you for reminding me of that, Josh. There we are. So, excellent, that's flower field. Now, one more flower-wise to go with. This is folk flowers now. Folk flowers, and it's a background eye. Now you can do so much with this. One of the things about background eyes, people may look at them and think that they're not very versatile. Oh my word, how wrong could you be? There's so much that you can do with this. Stylistically, it works with a lot of Tim's other dyes. It makes a great background, and we will see this background coming into a lot of the makes coming up. But I wanna show you this one first, because it shows the background in its entirety. A wonderfully 
very contemporary illustrative feel to this. Uh, you can see I've used stress inks on grey card just to give it a bit of subtle interest and interference kind of thing, but it doesn't disrupt that beautiful pattern background. Next up, this one is black on black, and again I've used gilding wax, I've used some paint dragging, and we've put this lovely little dragonfly, more of him or her, later. How about just using a little piece of that background? So what I've done, I've used my Distress Oxides, I've die cut it, trimmed it to size, put a piece of brown card behind it, Bob's your uncle. Now, these ovals, they're lovely, aren't they? Again, we will be talking about those later, but I want you to make you aware of them now. Um, this one, Happy Days. Again, using those lovely oval dies and a simple, very, very simple. I, I, I actually inked a, a big piece of card, I die cut it, and then I trimmed away the part that I wanted, the most interesting part to me, both color and in shape. Then, now, do you remember Tim's stack tile squares? I think I used these to create this one. This was, again, it was a background, it was inked up. I die cut it with the individual squares and I layered it up onto cream cut. Very, very simple, but another way to use this wonderful die. So I think we have quite effectively shown how versatile this can be. Uh, I'm going to get into the funky style now because Tim does love his funky dies. And this is a wonderful addition. This is Funky Cactus, and it has a, a more kind of illustrative, cartoony kind of feel to it. But this will work stylistically with all of the other Funky dies in Tim's collection, both past, present, and, as ever, future. Now, this one, let's stick together. Apologies for the pun. Uh, this is using the wonderful Sizzix cardstock, just plain cardstock, no inks, no nothing, no, nothing to hide behind, just beautiful form and lovely contrasting colors. Remember our, oh, what did we call it? It's folk flower. How can I forget these things? Folk flower. Now there's our background coming in here. There's one of our lovely cacti and that's been inked up using Distress Inks. And this one I particularly like because I do like simple, powerful, clean statements. Again, stuck on you. Um, and again, using the Distress Inks on the card just to pick up those lovely colors. That, my friends, is Funky Cacti. So let's stay with the funky theme. And I will introduce you to Funky Insects. There are five different ones in the set and each die contains all the elements you need to create that one insect. So what we've got here, we've got the dragonfly, we've got the beetle, we've got the ladybug, there's another There's another beetle there. Um, that could almost be a bee because of the stripes on it, depending on the colors you choose, of course, and this lovely moth. And again, very much in that funky style. So if you're using the funky florals, uh, then absolutely perfect. So let's take a look at some of the inspiration. And for all of these, I have used Distress Oxide inks to apply the color. There's our friend, the dragonfly again. Then how about that, that lovely moth? Again, I've used gray card. I've used Distress Oxides with that one. Oh, folk florals again. How about that? So there's our folk floral background, that lovely funky. So it's great to show how you can mix and match the styles. And I know that Tim, when, when he puts together a collection, he really thinks it through, but he thinks of what's come before it and what's yet to come as well. It's not just about the here and now. So these will fit in very much with a lot of dies uh, and embossing folders from previous collections. Finally, Love Bug, um, which is a great link actually to this next one. Now, it wouldn't be a Tim Holtz collection without an alphabet or numbers of some description. And this is Countdown now. It's very classic, the lovely wide letters, perfect for birthday numbers or anything like that. You can see the size of the numbers here, but it also works very well with some of Tim's four smaller fonts. And that is something that I will try to convey uh, with some of these samples. Now we talked about the love bug. How about that? Some of you may remember that if you are about my age, I was particularly obsessed with the film. Uh, Obviously the film is Herbie. Um, I love that. I absolutely adore that. I'm actually going to spray that up on a guitar at some point. But anyway, that's another story for another day. 
Now this one, using the same letters, numbers again, this time as a shaker card, cutting an aperture through this striped cardstock. And we've used one of Tim's alphanumeric. This is alphanumeric bold, that was from chapter one. But of course, any of Tim's alphanumeric die sets will work. I just like the way that these two sit together. Now this one will use the negative rather than the positive. So it's what's left behind. And again, there's our alphanumeric bold. If you uh, like your mixed media makes, this is a very, very, very simple one. Uh, it's for dad, whether he's 64 or not. But the beauty of having a number set is that whatever the age of the recipient, you just go in, you pick the two that you need, or the three, actually, um, and you can create whatever you want. It's all about making it bespoke. It's all about making it personal. It's all about personalizing it for the recipient at the end of the day. And that's the beauty of die cutting. It gives you that. Now, let's talk about positive and negative here. Now, you see these numbers we've cut out there from inked cardstock. Then the two underneath, I die cut those letters and I trimmed it to size. Now, what did I do with those letters? Well, if we look on the flip side, I actually attached them to the circle from which our numbers were cut. So you get the choice, positive or negative. Again, if you use Sizzix stencil film, why not die cut the numbers and stencil through them? So I inked through there. I spritzed it with water so you'll see them bleeding out. Very, very simple there. Now, on the back, that is using those very same numbers as a mask. So I've attached them to the card, inked over the top, and simply peeled them away. And that's, that's that, but a wonderful set. But there is one more, and at this point, I'm gonna ask my dear friend Josh to pan out slightly. This was something that we made for a trade event. Uh, it was a labor of love, um, and this shows all the numbers in their glory. Um, really, really cool, Meg, I, I, I do like this one. Uh, I shouldn't say that because I made it, but but I do, I do, I can't help myself. So there you go, that is Countdown. Very, very versatile, as I say, works beautifully with all of, other, all of Tim's other um, alphabets and so on and so forth. A really, really great set. I think everybody should have that in that, my stash, or their stash rather, because it's not going very far. Um, how about this? This is another Tim's 3D embossing folders. What was the highlight? The 3D embossing folders. Very, very ingenious, um, the, the, the textures and styles that Tim's comes out with. But this one, this one is called Circuit. And you can see it's, a, it's an old-fashioned circuit board. Um, it's great for the gamer in your life or the computer geek in your life. And I've tried to... Uh, Try to bring that across in some of my makes. Now, this is Unique Geek. It's a lovely little bookmark. It's just black card, embossed, and then I've rubbed on some of our luster wax to pick up the detail there. You can see the shine coming through. Then next up, how about this lovely, this, this is an old favorite die of mine. This is um, Hearts Primitive. There are three different hearts on the die. You'll find that in our Essentials range. And again, it's just die cut from black card and we use the luster wax to pick up the detail. And it says, this is binary and it says means I love you in nerd. Isn't that lovely? There you go. Oh, speaking of nerds, happy birthday to my favorite nerd. It's funny how the word nerd has become, some people wear it as a badge of honor these days. They, they're quite proud to call themselves a nerd. I like to think of myself as a bit of a nerd with certain things, craft items, for example. I'm sure many of you do as well. And this one, a uh, shocking pun. Love you to bites, computer bites, of course. And this one was simply a piece of white card which I um, tore, embossed, inked. So we're looking at Tattered Rose, we are looking at oh, worn lipstick and by the looks of it around the outside, picked raspberry. So really cool cut, great background, absolutely fantastic, wonderful addition to Tim's range as well. Now remember a while ago we were talking about those lovely ovals. Now this is an addition to Tim's Stack Tiles series. This is Stack Tiles Ovals. Previously we've seen circles, we have seen squares, and we have seen hexagons. Um, it's a wonderful series. You're not just getting five ovals, you are getting 25. So there's five 
sets of five included. So it's wonderful for creating tiles and backgrounds, and that is what I've tried to convey here. So I've created this background, it's kind of retro, but I've also used it to crop my printed sentiment. Printed or stamped, it's entirely up to you. So I've done it like that. So again, versatility. Here, another one. Um, so I've created a pattern, but I've also cut an aperture through there under which I've placed my sentiment. And then finally, to anybody, anybody who grew up or who lived through the 70s, you will recognize not only the font, but also the colors that I've chosen for this background. So very versatile, you know, there's lots of different things going on. Different colorways, different styles, different textures. It's just a great set to add to your stash. I think basic shapes, shapes like these, should be in everybody's stash. It's something that you will turn to time and time again down the years. Really, really cool. Now, let's have a look. Shall we talk about, I think we're gonna talk about Colorize now. Now, this is Benice. We love Benice here at Sizzix. I know Tim is very fond of her. Um, she's a wonderful addition to the Colorize Animal range. She really is. Um, now, Benice, obviously, now when we talk about Colorize, what does that mean? What does that mean exactly? Well, I put something together which might explain it to you for those of you who've never seen it before. Now, this is the first die, and the die will have a code on the back, and it will be a color code. And it will say, say for example, gray, whether you're doing it in grays or pinks, I think these are pink, but it'll say number one. But you can do the colors however you wish anyway. So that will be number one. Then number two, it will give you a color suggestion that will lay over the top like that. Then number three, again, and you can see, you can see in here, there are marks, there are impressions from this die, which shows you exactly where to lay the next one down. And you can see the impressions in this one. Okay, so that leads us on to our next color. So on this die, you will get all of those little bits. And then finally, finally, for detail, and again, you get the impressions, so I know exactly where that's gonna go. That essentially, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is how Colorize works. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. It really is. We've had so much fun with colorized dyes down the years. Um, it's another wonderful addition. As I say, it goes with Tim's animals. This is our friend Benice. Now, this time I used distress inks to color the card prior to die cutting. Oh, look, there's our folk floral background again. Who'd have thought it? Now, a funny story goes along with this. I was actually I was pondering what to do with this die. I was doing some makes and my friend's son, he, he brought him into work. He was collecting something. His son, I think Alfie's about five. Alfie Potter, big shout out. So he said to me, he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking what to do with this uh, hippo die. He said, oh, I like, uh, I like rhinos. And I said, well, yeah, do you know what? I think, I think Bernice some days when she wakes up, she would like to be a rhino too. And that got me thinking, if not a rhino, how about, how about a unicorn? So that's when I created this card. And it says, unicorn is a state of mind. And how proud does she look? She's got a little unicorn horn cut out of glow glitter card there, tied in a knot. She must be, she must be the, the absolute um, pride of the river that day, I think. But that's, it's a lovely die. It's a, it's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous die. It really is. And a wonderful addition to the colorized range. That is Benice. We do have one more colorized die to show you, which is our friend Rupert. Now, as a Welshman, I am very, very keen on dragons. Um, this is a gorgeous dragon. Again, it's so, there's so much life. The, the way that these, the limbs, the tail, the neck, everything flows, it has a life of its own. And again, it is colorized in the same way as Bernice's. So let's take a look at what we've done with Rupert. The first one is very, very simple. 
and that's just using different reds from some of our Sizzix cardstock, reds and pinks. Again, there's that back. Didn't I tell you it was versatile, this background? You didn't believe me, but look at that, check that out. So again, as a background for a completely different style. So there it is, that is Folk Florals in the background. This is Rupert in the foreground. He's been a bit cheeky there. He says, you need some help with those candles? Um, yeah, I'm getting to that age as well. So how about this one? Hot stuff, there you go. Uh, I'm not getting to that age. But um, this one is just plain card. It's plain white card, and it's been inked up with various different distress inks. And oh, I have my tin of distress minis, and you can get distress minis from the Sizzix website now. So this is what I will have used. These are the colors, the blues, the yellows, the greens. I will use those on card, and then die cut, and layer it up to create that wonderful dragon. And when I say wonderful dragon, I'm not taking the credit for that. It's in the die, you know, I just, you just, we just cut stuff and stick it together. And, you know, when you get quality dies like that from somebody like Tim, then it makes life a whole lot easier. Now, I'm gonna end with a big style. This is the last one and it's called Retro TV. Now this, as I say, is a big and it has an aperture. Now, of course, when you have an aperture, these days particularly, we are going to give you some shaker domes to go with it. Now, this is a, a so it's, it's a square. Well, it's kind of a square. It's, it's like a it's rounded square, I think it's called. So you're getting six in the set, and these sit within this aperture. Now, I know um, Christmas time, winter, um, and probably late autumn, we will be coming out with another die that you can use these for. So it's the gift that keeps on giving. It's not just about the TV. Um, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Because it's big, so that means we can cut thicker materials, we can cut mount board, we can cut uh, fabrics, we can cut felt, we can cut textile, we can cut pretty much anything that you can cut with scissors. But let's take a look at some examples. Now the first one, Retro Colors, uh, 1950s, it says 1950s to me, it says, you're not old, you're retro. But there we are, we've turned that into a bit of a shaky card as well. So I've added some of our wonderful sequins and beads, Sizzix sequins and beads that is. Um, so there you go, a little bit of luster wax on there to bring out the metallics, some wood grain paper, all cut out of mount boards so it's fairly thick. But we've got that dome, you can see that dome there. It really adds something to it. You can use the TV by itself, by all means. But you know what? Oh, how about, now when you've got something like this, you can put a photo in there for somebody's birthday. It can be their favorite TV show. You could put a quote from it, their favorite movie. One of my favorite movies in the late 70s was, you guessed it, Grease. You're the one that I want. What a wonderful say, way to say, I love you, say for Valentine's or something like that. Um, really cool. Again, opulent, silver opulent cardstock. This is Sizzix cardstock. Again, all attached to our mat board and die cut, and we put it together like that. I'm sure John and Olivia would approve. Now, thinking on that movie theme, how about this one? Here's looking at you, kid. I'm not even gonna to attempt to do a Humphrey Bogart impersonation, although we do share the same birthday. Um, that's where the similarities end, I'm afraid. But there you go, it, it's lovely. It's kind of a mixed media feel. There's stamping on there. It's very black and white, very retro, um, lovely vibe. And um, that is our retro TV. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that brings us to the end of our little presentation today. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, as I say, if you want to find out more, please go and check out Tim's overview because there's a lot of different samples. You'll hear Tim say a lot of different things which will uh, cement in your mind why these are such great dyes, what they work with, how you can best use them. Uh, but for any more information and to see some great makes and blogs and vlogs, Using some of these dyes, please go to sizzix.co.uk if you are in the UK and Europe and the rest of the world. But if you're in the US, it's sizzix.com. I've been Pete. Thank you very much for joining me. 